All right, cool, 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 cool. What's up, guys? Uh, my fellow pine coders and traders, in this video, I'm going to show you how to send your trading view alerts to your Discord channel. We're going to use webhooks and we're going to use a Zapier integration that will integrate with the email alerts. So if you do not have a pro account and cannot use webhooks, you will still be able to do this. So the first thing we need to do um, is go to our Discord server and it's very easy to set up. All you have to do is create a new channel. You could use an existing channel if you want, but I'm going to create a new one just for this test. And it doesn't have to be private. It can be if you want. I'm going to make it private here so it doesn't interfere with my actual live channel. And it'll ask you if you want to add members or roles. You don't need to do that. So now we have a channel set up. Very simple. Um, there's no special roles or anything like that. We don't need to add any of these bots. Um, just, all we have to do is go to edit channel and we go to integrations and we go to webhooks right here. Create a webhook. We can give it a different name if we want. We'll call this trading view. Trading view. And it's going to go to this channel. Actually, we can make it to go make it go to any other channel if we want, but we'll keep it here. And then copy webhook URL, save changes. Right? And that's it. So now we have this URL that we can use to send webhooks to. Now some of you that might not mean anything, but just watch. So now I'm back on trading view. I will go over here to create alerts and let's create an alert. So I'm just going to use the basic conditions here just to test it out. So I'm just going to create an alert on the current chart I'm on AWTC and we'll do just something less than less than something it will go off almost immediately set it up only once so it doesn't spam our channel and we're gonna do this we're gonna uncheck all these you can keep them checked if you want but the one thing we're testing right now is the webhook URL now what is that webhook URL well I'm gonna copy and paste what well I'm gonna paste in what I copied from from this copy webhook URL if you if you lost it so copy that paste it in there and that's it. That's the webhook URL. That's what we're sending to. Now, more actions. You can play a sound. Send email to SMS. You can ignore that. All right. You don't need to give this a name, but we will. We'll just give it uh, TV to Discord. The important part here is in this message context. So, in order for Discord to receive that alert, it needs to be in a certain format. And that format is JSON. Basically, what that syntax looks like, basically, this is JSON. So you have these two curly brackets, and then in between the two curly brackets, you have a field separated by this, um, this colon, and then you have the contents of that field, like that. And that's that's essentially your JSON. And you can you can make another field. Like this, field two, field two, oh geez, man, I can't spell today, with more contents. Something like that. So that's your basic JSON syntax. And, well, in this case, this won't do anything because we need to make sure it matches the syntax that the Discord bot is expecting. So if we go over here to the Discord developer port portal at this URL, you can see it kind of gives us the structuring for this. So I'm going to scroll down to, to post, which basically just means send a webhook. Where is it? Here we go. Execute webhook post. So this is the syntax that we kind of want to follow. And don't worry about all this stuff. Basically, we want to follow this JSON form parameters. And here's the first field, content, and that's where we'll be putting the message in, our alert. Whatever we want to, we want to send to our Discord channel, we'll put it all in this content. And you can see right here, it is required. So we must send 
a field that's called content. It's type string. It has to be a string. It can't be a number or a Boolean or anything like that. And it can contain up to 2,000 characters. And it's going to contain everything we want our alert to say, like ADA, BTC, go long, or something like that. We can also attach a username that will show up in the channel. I'll show you guys how to do that, but it's not required. So you don't need to add that in. And you can have some avatar URL, also not required, and other things here. So let's go back to here. And this is where we'll put in content for the field. And the contents could be could be anything really um, go TV alert right but you can use these uh, placeholders here you can add in things like that but for now let's just do this we'll test it out so create this should go off almost instantly and there we go so it was sent now let's check the Discord. And there we go. So we just got an alert from TradingView in our channel doing that. Very, very simple. Now it's not the most practical thing, but you see that it works just like that. Now you could add, if you want to add another field like username, you can do that. Username. And you have to make sure you get these the order incorrectly. If I put content after username, um, Discord won't parse it correctly and it won't work. Uh, this isn't the case for for everything JSON related. It's just I just noticed it while I was working with with Discord here. So make sure you don't screw that up. So username could be me. Save that. It'll restart. We go back here and now it changes the username to me. You can have that say whatever you want. If you have different bots, you know, you could change the name of your bot to that username so you know which bot's sending the signals. And then this one's kind of fun the avatar. Type an A. I don't know why that's happening. URL. Avatar URL. This is also a string. If we go back to the the API here we have content username avatar URL string override the default avatar of the webhook so we can go and find some images oh this looks good nope I don't want to grab it here copy image address I ended up grabbing this it doesn't matter you find some image image that you like as long as it's hosted somewhere you paste in that URL right there. Make sure it's surrounded by these uh, double quotation marks. Right? Make sure you got the commas separating every field and its contents. And save that. Now we'll get one more alert. Go back to our Discord. Check it out. Now if we hover over this. Well, there we go. Now that image is showing up here. So, have some fun with that. All right, so for those of you who are on a free account on TradingView, I'm going to show you how to do the same exact thing, but with the email alerts. So you don't have to get a webhook. You don't have to use a webhook. And yeah, hell yeah. So let's do this. Same thing, same steps. You're going to come over here. You're going to set up a channel, and you're going to set up an integration. You're going to create a webhook, right? Now, I won't create another webhook because we already have this one. I'm just going to reuse this. So do all this. We're still, we're still going to use the Discord webhook. But we don't need to use the TradingView webhook. Because Zapier will allow us to, to scan our Gmail inbox. I'm going to use Gmail in this case. And if they see a certain, certain email that we get, then they'll send the contents of that email to the webhook that we that we supply so it's just one extra step in the process 
So if we go to Zapier.com, if you're not familiar with Zapier, it's a, it's a pretty good service that just connects things together and helps you automate a lot of things. It's really useful if you don't know how to code or anything. All right. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to create an account. It might look a little different when you, when you do this because things constantly get updated. And you're going to want to connect your Gmail. G. So we got Gmail and we want to connect to Webhook, right? Webhook, Webhook. Webhooks by Zapier. That's the one you want to go. So bam. And when this happens, so what is our trigger? We want to have a new email matching search. Then we send a post request. Now that's important because we're sending a post, which is pushing information to that server. It's not trying to get information from that server. All right, so here we go, try it. Now it's gonna bring us to this page and we're gonna set it up, or we're gonna test it out and then we're gonna run it. So here we go, we connect our account. I'm gonna connect, my Gmail account is already connected here. I just selected it. And the trigger, now we have a, a search string that we're gonna set up. And let's go back to here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna create my, <clears throat> the search string actually could be, could be anything. So maybe we would actually put the name here, make this a little more distinct and unique. So when the alert comes in, you can identify it in your email. So we'll just call this one alert, uh, alert 42. Just give it some kind of unique name. So it can't be, um, so it can be identified, right? Here, send email. Be warned. All right, I'm gonna pause that though. So that's gonna be, basically it's gonna be the name, the string that we want. So here we go, I'm gonna call it alert 42. Continue, test our trigger. I'll skip that test because I don't think I have anything in there. Actually no, we can, we can actually test it out. Let's actually let this alert go off It'll send us an email. It will send us an email, right? Oh, yeah, there we go. Send email. Not crossing below. What happened to that? Here we go. Fix that. Boom. All right, now that's being sent to this email here. There we go. Alert, alert 42. And then this is what the email is going to look. You guys, you've probably seen this before, right? If you've used TradingView alerts. So here we go. And look at that. I just, it tested it. It found the email. We found an email matching your search. And it gives you kind of this um, whole rundown of what's in the email in just plain text format. All right. Just continue. Now, the action event is a post. Make sure that's that. And this is where it gets a little complicated, but it's not that bad. Just follow along. All right. Let's go back to our Discord server. Copy that webhook URL and paste that right here. That's where we're putting in it. We're putting our webhook URL right there. Set up action. We're posting to that. Okay. Payload type form. We're going to switch that to JSON. And now this is going to match up like the message um, for the for the message that the Discord server is expecting. So data, this will be our field actually. So we're going to put content. Because remember, content is the first field. And then here it will actually it will put in the contents of our email. It will help us do that. So we can put in the entire body of the email automatically. We can put in the date, subject, whatever we want here. But we'll just put in the body there. And then if you want, you can put in username and whatever else you want. You can add all these other fields. So we'll put this one as Zapier 
TV. Save your TV. Sounds good, right? Wrap a request in array. You can ignore that. File, you can ignore that if you want. Um, unflatten, yes. Basic auth, you can ignore all that. And continue. And that's it. <clears throat> but we want to test and review. So a request was just sent to webhooks by Zapier just now. Let's go to our Discord server, check the channel, and look at that. So it just took that email and it sent it here, and that's what it's going to look like. And you can play with this until you get the, the format correctly, whatever way you like. So let's turn this on. Now that we see that it works, let's turn it on. Okay, let's go to my zaps. I already have one of these. Um, I think it was this one. So let's post in webhooks by Zapier. So this is the one I just made. Now let's actually see if it works. So here we are. Alert set up. Send email. We're calling it alert 42. If we give that a different name, it won't trigger because that's the string it's looking for. And message, right? Whatever the message you want it to be. Let's just make sure that this actually triggers. Save that. Boom. No, nope. hold on. Takes a second. It takes a second. <clears throat> okay, so it, since I just created that zap, it, it might not work immediately. Um, so give it a minute. Let's try that again. There we go. So that's that.